on the beach! Put the bunny back in the box. I cannot take this anymore. The castle period is such a bore. All these plots, they make no sense. I find bliss when they all end. But Nick just doesn't go away. He's paying off his castles again. They're all the same. Every film you make me say. Here's the one step closer to the edge. And I'm about to break. I need to watch a good movie. Because I'm one step closer to the edge. And I'm about to break. Every film you make me say. I'm one step closer to the edge. And I'm about to break. I need to watch a good movie. Because I'm one step closer to the edge. And I'm about to break. Shut up when I'm watching this film. Shut up. Shut up! Shut up! Don't even think about vacuuming! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I'm about to break! Okay. <laughs> That's how Nick Cage has got me feeling. My headphones oh. came off, Brock. <laughs> I bet. Uh, well... You're the lucky one, then, All out right. of the two of us. Welcome to the We Gage Cage podcast, where we watch every Nicolas Cage movie ever made from worst to best, according to your IMDb ratings, in an effort to determine whether or not he is a good actor, because neither of us are familiar enough with his work. Not enough. <laughs> I'm your host, Brian Ambrosius, and with, with me, as always, the table to my chair, Brock Kircher. <laughs> with me. I'm with, I'm with you. I'm I like, always wisp you. I like need to calm down. I got I got spit on my screen, but uh, I don't want to wipe it off now because I don't want to mess anything up. Well, Whew. that just brings me back to the days where uh, we used to, when we were roommates, uh, have rock band. Yeah, up in the apartment. That's and part of the reason your grandma hated me <laughs> from singing that, songs like well, that. When we had rock band in the basement, yes, back at the back at the crib. But back when we lived together, uh, when we actually first lived together. In the loft apartment, gloriously nicknamed the B Hole. Hey, get it, get it everybody, because we're B Brock and Brian, and and it was a shitty apartment. Um, so our B Hole sublet of a loft, um, we set up a, a rock band, and Brian and I would just download like the the most screamo, emo kind of songs, and here uh, we are, or not? Yeah, uh, make damn sure. Yeah, like, Take It Back Sunday. Some Take It Back um, Sunday. Some Coheed and Cambria, and and this one. And, and some what's Lincoln nice Park. about rock? What's nice about Rock Band on this song is that when you scream it, they don't give a shit what your pitch is like. They just want you to talk. Like you could talk it. You could be like, "Shut up when I'm talking to you," and like it would give it to oh, you yeah. because they know you can't scream. Like it's hard to scream, man. Oh yeah, nah, nobody's Chester. Nobody's Chester. Oh, I lo- that that's R-I-P. one of the first songs that I ever got into uh, in terms of like rock music because of Susie and me and him we would listen oh, to like Suze. he bought Linkin Park CD and we would just Hybrid listen to that theory. single song on repeat all day. Oh yeah, there was this uh, project in I think middle school or high school that was like, hey, um, everybody like pick a song that's close to your heart and like yeah. do a paper on it or like give yep. a speech about a song. And I remember Mr. Roth uh, mm-hmm. was like, everybody that year picked one step closer to the edge. And he was like, really? I don't know what to feel about this. Because literally everybody picked one step closer. Like all really? the boys picked one step closer. I, yeah. picked, I picked the Thanksgiving song by Adam Sandler. That's an odd choice. <laughs> it was an odd choice. But hey, you know what? You're going to give me a weird project like that? I'm going to k- kind of put my own twist on it. I remember I think I picked Back Where I Come From. By Kenny Chesney, something like that. Brock, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I still need to kind of calm down. Like, that gets you. I'm I'm 30 now. Are you and okay? I haven't been to Your a face lot of is like a little red. Yeah, I haven't been Ryan. to a lot of rock concerts lately. But man, like, even when you're 30 and your back hurts all the time, once you start like head banging, it just gets you riled up. Put your shirt back on, son. Dude, best concert I ever went to was Taking Back Sunday in Amberlin. 
But my favorite memory is Amberlynn's going away tour. I was like 29. This was just a few years ago. I was like 27 or something. And just, oh, I just jammed out all, all the songs because I knew it was their last one. Makes me uh, kind of sad. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, guys, by the way, we watched a movie. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Rage. We watched a movie this week. Rage we by Nick Cage. More like Nick Rage. <laughs> I'm bringing the joke. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could have done so much with that rhyme. Um, Why didn't you tailor the, the song to the movie, Brian? God. I have, I've been listening to our past podcast on Times 2 to find where you said that, and I'm having a hard time finding it. Maybe you took, told me off mic, but I know what happened. Or maybe I just never said it at all. Once I find it, you will feel so stupid. Because So so your argument is that I once said that I tailor my songs yes. to Yes. So then I did the my movies? next two. I tailored them. I could have sworn it was after Taylor Swift, and that's why the you said the only. Like, the only thing that I said is that I was going to potentially do "Dog Eat Dog" for Snoop Dog Eat Dog, and then you did Taylor Swift because Taylor Swift was mentioned like four times in "Dog Eat Dog," and because it did not like deserve the level of like effort that I put into tailoring the lyrics around "Dog E Dog." All right, um, so let's, that is it. Otherwise, okay, so it's all been you, baby boy. We watch Rage, but let's we're gonna hold off on that. It's a it's a 2015 film, um, whatever Castle period 2014. Blah, blah Castle period. But we have a couple things we want to do here today. Um, we kind of teased it last time. We have a game, and then also because Brock keeps ripping on me about why him, we wanted to we're gonna play two games, I guess. So let's <gasps> start with the games, better games, game. everybody. Let's start with the better game. It's like the substitute teachers in class, and we are (laughs) fucking around. And uh, I'll admit, even though I came up with the other game, this is the better game. I kind of proposed. I came up with this is the better game. Okay. Yes. I want to talk about something that Brian has literally been like telling me that he. No, no. The better game is us figuring out each other's three movies. Oh, this is. This, this is, is the better game because the other game, game. I, I don't even know if it's going to work. We might have oh to cut it because God. it's going to be terrible. What? Um, so let's do okay. it. Okay. Brock keeps ripping on me about why him. So I propose to him, hey, let's list our favorite three movies and our least favorite three movies. I thought and it was Brock favorite, came up. top five because we ordered. Wait, Nick's you did films. five? I did top five and oh, bottom Jesus. Three. Oh, bottom okay. three, top five? Yeah. Well, I put some honorable mentions on here. I'll throw a couple up there, I guess. Okay. Okay. So let's start with our guesses. I... Oh, frick. You're going to guess for me? Yeah. I'm an but open I, book. You know what? Screw it. Here's here's one of my top guesses is Scott Pilgrim versus the world. You would be correct. Boom! I, when we went, okay, I don't want to, I don't know how much we want to linger on this, but I just remember when we went to the movie theater and saw mm-hmm. this movie, we left and we were just both like, wow, that was away. fun. Yeah, so I would definitely count Scott Pilgrim vs. World as one of my top five, uh, if not one of, like, I mean, if not the top movie. Uh, it's, it's just fun. It's just a very fun movie. I really like how it's shot stylistically. It's a movie directed by um, Edgar Wright who's done a few other films that I really like, um, um, including, you know, like Sean, Shaun of the Dead and mm. Hot Fuzz and, and that Cornetto trilogy. And then uh, most recently, Baby Driver, a film which Brian will not watch only because of the title. Yeah, bad title. I'm not going to go watch it. Uh, I'm also putting Pineapple Express on there. I don't know. That one's I'm a, I'm a little more iffy on. Ooh. Didn't make the cut. Oh. Did not okay. make the cut, unfortunately. You know, I could... I, because I only wrote down three, I'll throw out another uh, Mr. Apatow movie, uh, Superbad? That did. That did it make did. the cut. Yep. Awesome. Good. So it was... So it I got was, two out of three. It was between Superbad and uh, Pineapple Express. And okay. And I went with Superbad. All Only right. because of kind of its place in, you know, it, it came first and I've seen it multiple times and it, it kind of like hit me at that right spot growing up where it it kind of, you know, not It reminds us of lives, us, kind yes, of. People look at 
Jonah Hill and Michael Sarah, and they see <laughs> Brian and my relationship yeah. in theirs. And I see it too. Um, okay, yeah. well, so I got that's three guesses. I got two. That's not bad so far. I I'm gonna guess, and just to kind of spite me, I think there's gonna be two Marvel Cinematic Universe movies on here. In and my I top? yeah, and go for it. I'm I'm gonna guess Guardians of the Galaxy. No, didn't make the cut. And screw it, I'll throw out the other one, Black Panther. No. Okay. Did not make the cut. Well, still, Both two out of five. Movies. Both are fine right. movies. They and you got to Is there a Marvel Cinematic five. Universe movie on there? No. Oh, really? Okay. No. Well, all right. I'll take two out of five. All right. So what... Um, if I'm going to go with like a superhero kind of movie, Scott Program vs. the World is it. Okay. Well, what what are your other three? Okay. So for my top five... Uh, can I, can I throw out one gonna... more guess? Because I wasn't prepared for five. Sure. My, I guess one of my other guesses might be like 500 Days of Summer. No. Ah, oh, okay. No. So, so here's in assembling my top five. I actually have, I actually have all the movies right here. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> okay. Right, yeah, that's so good we'll start off. With, oh, snatch, huh? Uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Yep. So this movie, like I said, um, it for those who haven't seen it, it's it's a movie kind of based off of like a graphic novel, um, comic booky kind of thing, and it's. It's just really cool. It's got like a lot of video game elements and superhero y kind of elements and and yeah. And so it was honestly between this or any other kind of superhero y Okay. So video you just wanted one movie. superhero movie. So it was like, yeah, if I had to choose one, it's gotta be Scotty P P versus okay. the World. I thought for um, sure, to spite me, you were gonna pick like one or two MCU movies. Honestly, it was either gonna be this or Guardians of the Galaxy Two. Oh, Guardians of the Galaxy or 2. potentially Logan. But Logan's so recent. Oh, Logan's I good. love Logan. I Logan's love great. Logan so much. I did too. Um, when I saw it. So yeah, so next one you mentioned it is Snatch. Um, so Snatch is a film by Guy Ritchie. Uh, it's like a British kind of gangster mob movie. So Snatch is the movie that I want every like Nick Cage gangster movie to be. Uh, and then I'm hoping that it, it is and it and it isn't. It's like an ensemble film. It has Brad Pitt. It has Jason Statham. People know Snatch. Um, people might know Snatch. I don't know. It's great. And that's where I was like, I don't me and your mom for a caravan. It's got the Pikes. It's got like this like you know British like gypsy gang. Yeah, it's, it's great. Um, and just the dialogue and the twists and okay, the turns. Yeah, we get and, it. Yeah, you like okay. Snatch. Okay, like Snatch. I like Snatch, too, if you know what I mean. Oh! I do. And so it was either between Snatch or another movie, Lucky Number Slevin, which is an American kind of film, same Very kind of style. Very similar vein, yeah. Yeah. I really like Lucky Number Slevin. Some people don't. I don't care. This I like is that me. Movie. It's movies that are personal to, to my heart. Um, yeah. Then we got Super Bad. So, yep. like I said, it was honestly, and then again, it was kind of like always it's a toss up between two. So it was a Super Bad or Pineapple Express, but. I, I remember loving Superbad when it came out. I remember seeing it like a ton of times, um, you know, just on DVD, in theaters, etc. Dude, um, did you find this to be quotable, really hard? Super quotable. It was it was difficult. Because Standing in front so of like my movie rack movies? and just being like, oh. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, I have so many I could have put up there, but, it, and I, I actually found it easier to throw out your guesses just because you don't really know. So you kind of just like sure. pick some movies and you're like, all right, this sounds good. Two out of five. I'll take it. All right. Let, All right. Let's hear your guesses for uh, me for my top well, five. Well, no. I, those aren't my... Those are just three. Oh. Oh, oh Jesus. I got two more. I got <laughs> oh, two more. Yeah. I got The Untouchables. So this is a movie that you probably oh. wouldn't have guessed. But I really like this movie. So this is actually a French film. Um, it's just like a very heartwarming film. I believe you have watched it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, based on like my recommendation. I remember seeing it in theaters. It's a foreign it's a film, couple, people. Yeah. It's a couple movie, like a couple years old. But it's... Basically, like, a, a story of a invalid, like, a, a guy who's, like, paralyzed and his, like, caretaker. It's, like, based off a true story. It's just heartwarming. It makes you cry. I, um, I could have potentially gotten fantastic. Snatched. There's no way I would have gotten The Untouchables. The in, the Intouchables. Intouchables. Not the Untouchables, everybody. Sorry. All right. And then my fifth is my favorite rom-com. I needed rom-com Is that Sudeikis and uh, yeah. Brie? Yeah. It's Sleeping With Other People. 
So I love the movie Sleeping with Other People. This came yeah. out like a couple years ago. Is kind of slept on. A it's horny movie. I would Jason Sudeikis it as. and Allison Brie. Um, Adam Scott's in it. Jason Manzukis is in it. They all do like, fantastic work. Like I'm not gonna lie. Like I, I felt horny when I watched it after I watched it. It's Sorry, a, mom. It's kind of a but horny like movie. it's so it's, sexual and you're just like, oh my god. And like I was yeah. like you, so it, it didn't matter. But well, <laughs> or maybe so it this, did. So with this movie, like. <laughs> I know that like there's the no strings attached, and there was the other one, Friends with Benefits, that kind of came out around the same time. This movie ah, those is like suck. in that same ah. kind of vein, though. Just of like these are two friends, but instead of trying to like be f buddies, they're basically just trying to be friends and not have sex with each other. And just the acting's great. I love Suds. I love me some you Suds. I know Sudeikis. that you hate Bateman, but like I like Sudeikis Suds. Sudeikis is funny. You know, when yeah. you're watching Horrible like Bosses, Sudeikis. like Charlie Kelly and Sudeikis' back yeah. and forth, it's it's cute. Yeah. So those are my five. Oof, boy. Okay. Scotty P, wanna... Snatch, Superbad, The Untouchables, and Sleeping with Other People. All right. Let's hear your guesses for me. For Brian, I'm going to guess that Scotty P versus the world is also in your top five. No, it didn't even make my short list. What? No, that's a shame. Um, Sorry. Okay, then I'm. I gonna like guess it. That Dumb and Dumber. Obviously, here. that's the one where last week I was just like, you know, I don't know if it's due to nostalgia or whatever, but it's like, who cares if it's nostalgia? It's one of my favorite movies. I can quote. I can yep. probably quote like the whole dang movie. So, yep. yeah, it's one of my favorites. All right, um, I'm gonna go with the wrestler because I know you love the wrestler. Uh, it was on my short list, but it didn't quite break my top even didn't 5, I don't think. Break the 5? I know I lo- that movie is so good though. I know you love the wrestler. I remember I love it. We watched the wrestler and I like chugged a bottle of vodka and then we had to sit like in the front row. It was bad. It was it was in I will, in our youth. Let me say this. Some oh, bad no, I want you to keep guessing. Were made that weekend. I want you to um, keep guessing and then I'm going to say something about the wrestler. But it's Darren Aronofsky, who you typically hate. Yeah. Um, but The Wrestler and Black Swan are really good. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm going to go with The Dark Knight. Uh, that's on my short list, dude. You it didn't shut make it up with five. your short list. I gotta, it's in my honorable mentions. Aye, aye, aye. Brock, you it's right there. Like, Brock, so this is where my jazz for the Dark Knight. You Brock, like you know what? I'll explain. You made it all us once all get done. tickets. You made us all like stand in line. You were so I didn't do that. like you. I wasn't that excited because I didn't like Batman Begins that much. It was more to John Keepers. Why? Oh, he's getting another shout out. Uh, uh, more shout out John him. Keepers. We know why you love Batman. You, you but nerd. I I like I wasn't that excited for it because I didn't like Batman Begins that much. And now when I go rewatch Batman Begins, I think it's better than I initially gave it. But yeah, The Dark Knight, I do love it. Like I said, it's on my short list, no, man. I'm sorry. I remember sorry. watching The Dark list. Knight, but I think we actually went in line for The Dark Knight Rises, maybe? Yeah, and that one, no, obviously it's not as good. Okay. Anywhere near as good. Okay, what's another guess? The Artist. No. I you Come on. You loved that movie. I don't know why. Brock, okay, I don't okay, love that I movie. Got I got another one. I got another one. No. Then. I got this another is, one, then. I went and watched it, and I, I just thought it was interesting, especially for being a silent film. And I was like, okay. it really, like, it's okay. something I've never watched before. But it's I not like I don't really own it. Or I didn't. Anything. I didn't like. It. I didn't. I never saw it, so I never I, knew. The dog how much is funny, man. With. I didn't. I, no, this is where this is why I wanted to do this game because you think that I like all these weird movies, and it's like, yeah, I enjoy that movie, but I, I don't own it or like. I'm only going based off like movies that I've seen in your rack, but like now Leon's movies have all just like taken over. So I'm sorry. Is Pitch Perfect one of them? No. No. <laughs> is like okay. Yeah, Leo's, I got Leo's a couple. List is I got a couple Leo's other is, guesses. Leo's is Pitch Perfect Pitch, one, two. Pitch Three, two, American Pie, American Pie two, three. boom. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I got, I got, I got some honorable mentions that I think. Then was that five? That was five. I can't believe you put but the I artist think, in there, man. Like the illusionist or the oh. other one that was like the illusionist. No, not the other one. No, no, no. The illusionist is my or no, the prestige. I mean, the prestige. Yes, I, I the love the I prestige, want. but that didn't make my short. Fuck list you with like your. I love these movies. Okay, I'm sorry. I should have picked all comedies. I suppose. Okay, you want me to tell you? Yes, absolutely here's, I do. Here's a couple things. Feed me, baby bird. I'm going mama with bird. right now. What do I, like, I feel like, for example, one of mine is Wonder Woman. I freaking love Wonder Woman right now, to the point where every time I was on a plane, I'm trying to watch Wonder Woman. I bought Wonder Woman. I love Wonder Woman. I feel like maybe in five years, the wrestler could overtake the uh, Wonder Woman and be in my top five. Okay? So That's what I was going to say. This is so weird, but okay. I, what do you want me to say? 
I don't I know what I, I want like. you to say. It's just so weird to me. And out of my super, that's that's why uh, the Dark Knight was on the short list because I I didn't want to like. I don't like superheroes that hero movies that much, so I was just like, only pick one. No shit. I, so the fact that you give Wonder Woman like such a, a like just so a, you know, applause. I'm not the only one that thinks that. I don't that. know why you love Wonder Woman so much. I, I thought it was awesome. okay. I thought I thought it was awesome. Shut up. This is my list. Like I said, in five years we do this again, it might not be on there. Okay. Um, I was in a huge Jim Carrey. Hate. I was a huge Jim Carrey fanboy for mm, that's years. True. Not so much anymore. Do you know it? Liar, liar. No. I love Liar, liar. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. I love that movie, man. I should have guessed that. Yeah. I should have. For a dramatic role with him, I that's one of my favorite movies. You know I love my animated films. What If you had to guess an animated film, what would you pick? I don't know pick- because you like don't <laughs> like animated films. You're the anti, like, never got to watch Disney growing up. Brock, or Pixar. I have every Disney Pixar movie and a lot of Disney movies. You don't. Brock, I'm going to take a... We're posting it to Instagram. My movie collection, my Blu-ray, literally 80% Pixar. For me, it was a short list between Wally and Lego Movie, which isn't even Disney Pixar, but I picked I, Lego Movie. I was honestly... I saw a Lego Movie sitting up there, and I'm like, would that monster love- pick Lego Movie? I love Lego Movie. I think it's hilarious. And my last one, I can't believe you didn't say it, man. It's one of yours. Super bad. Yes. Yeah. No, I picked. Here's, okay, here's my thing. I was like, I, I went into it the same approach as me. I was like, I could put Super Bad in there, but if I'm going to put like Scotty P in there, then I'm going to pick like, is it Super Bad or Dumb and Dumber? And I was like, oh, well, he's Both. probably going to have to choose between Super Bad or Dumb and Dumber. So he's going to pick Dumb and Dumber. He's going to pick a superhero movie, so he's going to pick The Dark Knight. And then I was like, he's going to pick a dramatic movie, so he's going to pick The Artist. Eternal like, Sunshine is possible. You were close. Um, but yeah, so here's my story about Superbad. When we went and watched it, and this is the same thing that happened with Step Brothers. When I went and watched it, I hated it in theaters. I, I guess it was just unexpected. It wasn't what I was thinking. Same thing with uh, Step Brothers. And then after they like came became released and I watched them again, they're two of my favorite comedies now. I love them both. Mm. One other movie that was kind of on my short list was Fifty Fifty. I really like Fifty Fifty. Gotcha. Uh, the um, right. um 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 J- J- Joseph Gordon Levitt and Seth Rogen vehicle. Yes. All right, let's do the bottom okay. three. You want to guess okay. mine first? Yeah, there's another romantic comedy that I was going to throw out there if I didn't pick Sleeping with Other People. About time. It's a fantastic romantic movie. <laughs> okay. About time. It's got Rachel McAdams, my girl. It's got Domino Gleason. It's like a time travel kind of thing. It's it's fantastic. It's just so sweet. Bill Nye is his dad, and it's just like the sweetest movie. Makes me cry almost every time. Oh, it's so I, I, good. I'm gonna say this. I think our other game is gonna have to wait one more week again. No, nope, no, nope, <laughs> no. Nope, we're doing let's it. Go. We're doing let's it. Go. My What's three my bottom worst. three. Your bottom three. One has got to be probably Dog Eat Dog because it was so bad. I'm going to no. guess that another one was probably, I don't remember which one it was that you watched, but Epic Movie or Date Movie or... Date Movie. Date Movie's okay. on there. Date Movie. And so, then, uh, Dog Eat Dog was not Epic, uh, Date Movie was. Have you seen one of the Fifty Shades movies? Uh, no. Okay. I thought maybe you had with Leah and that you would have just thrown that on there because... I can't you, you believe it. you didn't get this one right either, man. We were what? just talking about them. What? The Human Centipede 3. You love those movies, I thought. I do thought. not love those movies. <laughs> well, see, this is why I wanted to do this game. You love that those movies. That movie is movies. disgusting. You watched all three of them. Here's the why like... I watched all three of them. Because I watched The Human Centipede, <laughs> and you know what? The Human Centipede, not bad. For a horror oh movie, it's God. like, okay. So then The Human Centipede 2 came out, and they were like, oh, it's even worse. So I was like, oh, how can it be worse? Oh, watch it. Watch Human it. Centipede 2, on my short list, because it is freaking terrible. Then Human Centipede 3 came out, and they're like, oh, this is even worse than Human Centipede 2. And I was like, well, now i got to watch it because I'm, like, too deep. Human Centipede 3 is – the acting is freaking terrible. It's just a gross out, and, yeah, it's one of my least favorite movies. You guys, and this is why, like, this man won't, won't <laughs> spend two hours watching a film that I have – that I and everybody has told him is good, like a Baby Driver or a Black Panther, but will sit down in front of a TV and watch the Human Centipede 2 and 3. <laughs> So the Human Centipede 3 is on my short list. Human Centipede 2 was on the short... Or, uh, Human Centipede 3 list, is yes. one of my least three. Human Centipede 2 was on the short list. And then, here's what I want to explain for my last one. 
after we watched The Wrestler, after we watched Black Swan, I was like, oh my God, these movies are good. Like, mm. who's this director? So I saw it was Darren Aronofsky. So I saw his first two movies were Requiem for a Dream and Pi, and they were both very critically mm. acclaimed. So I went back after watching The Wrestler and Black Swan and watched those two movies. I did, they're not for me. They, they're they, it's, dramatic. It's, it's dramatic. It's it's the trauma. He's trying to simulate like being on drugs Dramatic. and like it, it's it's a weird directing. But he won yeah. a, a, an award for it. Yeah. I hated him. So those two were on. Like I had to choose between them. I went with Pie. Yeah. Pie is one of my least favorite movies I've ever watched. After I got done, I was just like, what the hell? Yeah. I have to say one more thing. I discovered Ed Wood a few years ago, who is a mm. notoriously terrible director mm-hmm. and like. Took Bella Lugosi on a lot of his roles after Bella Lugosi was Dracula. Like he's the mm-hmm. he's the first Dracula, so yeah. he was well past his prime. Planet he made movie. a couple of the yeah. most critically disdained movies in Planet uh, Plan Nine from Outer Space and Glenn or Glenda. I did watch both of those. They are obviously bad, but it's like because Edward didn't know what the hell he yeah. was doing, and they're so old. I was just like, you know what? They're not going to be on my list. All right, and they're kind of funny because like the I didn't spaceships know that you've are acting. The spaceships are actually like trash can lids and stuff. They're they're terribly bad, but you know it's kind of enjoyable. Bad, low budget, like don't take themselves so right seriously, kind of thing. Yeah, I get it. Uh, your bottom three, Doggy Dog has to be on there. No. See, come on, man, you're lying now. No. Movie forty three. Movie forty three is on there. It had to be. Yeah. Your other one, I'm going to go, it's one you might just watch recently, The Room. No. The Room okay. was the room was fine. The Room was an enjoyable experience. I, Is it kind of the same as the Ed Wood movies? Like, yeah. You know, yeah. it's so but incompetent like, that you almost enjoyed point, it. At this point, you go into it, and it's like live theater because everybody is shouting out and doing, and there's this whole, like, ritual that goes into watching The Room with, like, people throwing spoons at the screen and people literally like shouting out lines before the lines come up or like doing like a call and response with the folks on screen and it's so i got one to do okay Okay. i got one did you get you got one of mine okay so we each got one of our bottom three what are your other bottom three ones uh so the first one is a movie that i had to watch in film school uh called tetsuo the iron man never heard of it it is a like Japanese steampunk movie that I absolutely hated, and it's like a black and white. Uh, film why did you have to watch it? Because it was like we had to write a paper on it. But why that film if it's notoriously bad? It. I think that our professor liked this movie and like liked this style of really, movie. and it is this black and white like weird anime kind of steampunk movie where this dude basically like kills a creature and then in order to get revenge like this creature who's like made up of a machine and i think he's called like the machinist or something like that like oh that's a good movie too infects him and um basically like turns his body into like metal and at one point he has a giant rotating like robot dick that he like rapes a bunch of women with it's Oh. It's just awful. It is. It is. Yeah. And I. I remember writing like taking my final exam, and you know we like sit down in the room and we get to like write out all the exams. And one of the final questions was like, "Hey, do you have any feedback for me as a professor?" And I wrote, "I will never forgive you for making me watch Tetsuo the Iron Man." Nice. <laughs> and, all right. What's what's one of your other ones? Uh, my my final one is Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen. Really? Okay. The only movie I think that I've seen in the theater where I stood up about halfway through and was just going to walk out because I was like, absolutely not. This is not worth it. Yeah. It, I've gone on rants about that movie. The like how pissed off that movie made me because it's so racist. Like Michael Bay obviously takes himself very seriously in what he's doing, and like, but like none of it makes sense at all from start to finish the entire plot is driven around like all of these robots that could have protected this like valuable MacGuffin the entire time could have just like stayed alive and protected it but instead they decided let's all just like form a pile and die and that's how we're going to protect this thing is like we're going to 
we're going to get into a pile and then die on top of it. Good idea. Brock, I'm it's making the executive the decision. The we are holding off on the other game. We are almost half an hour in. The other game's waiting another week, dude. We can't no. build it up enough. No. We're no, it's it. waiting. I'm no, not going to do it, Brock. It. We're playing it. No, we're not. I'm, yeah. I'm not going to do it. No, I'm we're going to do it. I'm not. We're going to do it. Uh, so we're going to do it. 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 No, we're doing Let's it next do it. week. Let's do it. <laughs> you can't eat them. Yeah. Fine. You know what? How long could this game possibly take anyway? Exactly. This is called the Raw Dog Game. We're going to see how many M&Ms we can Raw Dog. By the way, I cannot believe I won that last game. Again. Like, I... I thought for sure you would get more of my movies, man. And you've watched so many more than me that I thought I would have a harder time. I didn't spend a long time guessing and analyzing you. I'm sorry. Guys, we have M&Ms. We are going to see who can raw dog the most M&Ms. We're going to start with one M&M a piece. And then we're going to go up I to guess. two and three until we can't go anymore. Okay, so guys, Brian is so jazzed about this game. <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't know how there's a winner. Because you give Nick It Gage sounds like goes two highest. losers <laughs> who are just sitting here swallowing M&Ms together. Oh. Uh, because you, there are no winners in this game. You give there Nick Gage just a losers. hard time that I'm going to prove that's possible. Okay. I, you just do one. You're there's, chewing There's it. a couple half pieces. I'm just getting them out of the way. Them. They're right. out of the way. I'm getting the. So half here's my first one. Way. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I got a lot of saliva, so this should be easy. Here's my first one. One. From all that screaming earlier. There's one. Uh. <laughs> I, I'm. I'm an alcoholic. I just lost my daughter. I mean, you know, it's method acting, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Are you chewing? <laughs> okay, it's still in there. You're letting it melt. All right. I'm letting it. I melt. got two. Oh, got Brian's two. got the Easter. This is an unfair advantage. He's got Easter M and M's. Everybody. Yeah, see, I bought the the single packs, like so that he's he holding them up to the them. camera as if people <laughs> will be able to see. I want you to see that I got two. All right, it already feels weird. I'm not gonna lie; like it feels like it's stuck in my throat. Uh, but here goes two. <sighs> Done. I like the the look of determination that you have on you. I, do I have to like? Rock, I'm gonna silence? win. Okay, you're gonna win. I'm gonna do two green ones because that's my power color. Okay. Is it getting harder? You're like chewing or something. See, you're not good at this. I was practicing. You were practicing? What does <laughs> yeah, that even work? I sent I sent you a Snapchat with two pills and I didn't have any water, so I've never pills? done more than two. So here's okay. three, Brock. Here's the thing, though. Like I've Brock. Here's my three. I've never backed down from one of these I'm eating going. challenges. Have you ever done any of these eating challenges? Like the done. Have you ever done like the saltine challenge? Yeah, we're like can I can't you do eat it. Like six saltines or whatever. I in can't like a do minute? it. Maybe we'll do that next I time. I did that and it like almost shredded my throat. It was Brock. It was. Rough. I did three. Have you ever done the I... cinnamon challenge? Of course. All right, here's three. Three readies. The orange. <laughs> okay. <laughs> how many? How high can we actually go? I man? don't know. You were like, "What <laughs> happens if we get to 12 And I was like, oh, "Then we, <laughs> then we get, get to twelve. All yeah. right, here's my four, dude. Here's my four. Yeah, this doesn't feel good. Like I said, there's no <laughs> winners in this game. But I just we, like we needed to do it this week because I'm not sitting on these stupid <laughs> bag of M and M's thinking that I have. Here's to my do four, this. dude. Watch me. Okay, four banger. Red pill or blue pill? Got it. You got to take the freaking blue pill. Got bro? it. Taking my four blues. My fiver has every color. Oh. Everyone knows the blue ones taste the best, by the way. Blue ones do taste the best. Everybody does know Exactly. That. Exactly. It's never been a secret. And the brown ones are the worst. See, I don't know. There's a lot of chewing action going on on your end. <laughs> I got to situate them in the back of my throat so that I can swallow them down, you dick. So, yeah, if we can only... What if we swallow, like... Half of them, what? but then the other half are sitting in the mouth. Do we lose? Yep, that's how we lose. What? You don't get them all in one go. I don't understand what you're even saying to me. If, like, you only swallow three of these five, you lose. You got to be honest. This is an honest game, and so here's one, my five. In one gulp? Mm-hmm. That's how oh we Oh, my God. It. I better start working up my saliva. <laughs> Here goes can my you, uh, By the way, take that melts in your mouth, you, not in your hands. Can you pop that shirt off? <laughs> yeah. Melts in your mouth, not in your hands? Up. I'm going to start Such a mine lie. Up. They're Brian melting said, in my hands as I speak. Brian said before we started recording, what happens if we get so dry? To which I replied, I never get dry, baby. Done. Always There's my wet. five. There's my five. Oh I got to open another bag, God, actually. I'll a, do it right in the mic here. You're a man among. Open up my. 
No. Oh, I got broken pieces. Not men. Did you do your five? No. Here. Do you want to count them? Oh, dude. I got a it does green. not feel good. I got a red. I got Is this an orange. I got a yellow and a brown. Yeah. This isn't like, again, I. <laughs> They're Brian like stuck in has my throat. been so jazzed about this, you guys. He's been. So, the reason we didn't play last week, explain to them the reason we didn't play last week while I put these five in my mouth. <laughs> Because I told you I wanted to do M and M's. You go out shopping and you're making peanut chicken or something. No, you're not. You're making some Asian dish, but you needed peanuts. You come back home, all you have are peanuts. I had to go grocery shopping. I thought you only bought. I thought you only bought peanuts, so I only bought peanuts. Feel like a winner. But then you did. <laughs> you did actually buy M and M's. So then I went out and bought M and M's. Yeah, it's a whole to do. Yeah. Right. Are you are you tapping? No, I'm not tapping. I'm. <laughs> Crying. You look, very, you look like you're, you look like you're in pain. Yeah. Well. Now I just spit again, man. What is up with this? All right. I got six. I can't show guy. you anymore. It's too this many. is such great <laughs> podcast material. This is this is all Brian's idea. I just want that to be on record. This is Brian's Both idea. of these games are my idea. Oh boy, here goes six. I got the saliva built up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's real sticky. Oh I'm wow. Just, I'm learning, dude. I'm learning how to do it. Oh my god, you guys, he's getting smarter. This is like it's like doing a beer bong. Like you you kind of figure it out how to open up your throat. <laughs> yeah, I learned how to open up my throat. Psh, you think that you can beat me in a beer bong in contest, baby? Oh god, we're up to seven. What are we on? Seven? I got four yellows, two light blues, and one light green. Psh, I'm gonna run out of MMs, dog. <laughs> That's why I kept those. Now I'm gonna have to go man. switch to honey roasted peanuts. Still oh got God, peanuts left over. Here goes seven. Should we just jump it up to ten? Fuck it, let's jump it up to ten. All right, I, I got care. seven. I got eight. You I need a couple. I need another bag. You, you know what? I, this has gotten too easy. We're going you to think ten. I'm scared. What do we got? Four. You realize four, that after two. ten, right. that I might not have eleven or twelve. I got ten here. So we're gonna have to go. Straight this is to hard. Ten looks hard. Ten looks hard. All right, here we go. Are you watching? I'm so watching, Brian. I've never... My eyes haven't left your luscious lips. Here we go. And that throat. That manly throat. All of them. Right down. It's it's feeling really chocolatey. Feeling really weird. It's like stuck on my Adam's apple, it feels like. Oh, man. I almost snuck 11 in there. That would have been disastrous. Maybe that's how we should have done it. That would have been disastrous. Here, can count? Oh, no. <laughs> now I just lost them. Oh, my God. These little bastards are everywhere. Oh, my God. Oh, there's ten. Okay. There's right. two, four. Oh, just God. No, there are no. Oh, it. God. Two, four, Just do it six, already. Eight, nine, ten. Now you're fresh all my saliva. <laughs> this is easier Ugh. than I expected. What do you want? <laughs> like, what do you? Yeah. How does one win? Do you just want me to gag? Is that what you want? You want me to gag on on, ki- yeah. on the microphone? I honestly didn't think we'd get to 10. If I'm being honest. Should we just call it a draw? No. Do you, ha- do you have 11? Uh, yeah. Two. How, ma- how four, many do you have left? Six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, nine. <laughs> All right, here's I how we're going to see who wins. I got 19 left, Brian. Here, and a couple of one. pieces. Brock, do you a couple feel of halves. Like you can do 19 I got, of them? I can do 20. We should just do this do like the 20? how high game. Exactly. That's what we're switching it to. You do you have twenty of them? Yeah. I, well, I got all right. Nineteen and two halves. That's that's twenty. That's twenty. Right, and if go, I can find one of them that skittled away, skittles? No, these are M and M's. I can find one that skittered away. I can do twenty. Brock, you do twenty. Uh-huh. I'm gonna get twenty one set up. If you do twenty, I'll try doing twenty one, and then I win. And then you win. Okay, Brian. <laughs> Gosh. I hope that you can just so walk away M&Ms. from this with winning. Dude, this is going to be a game. Everybody's going to do it. This is like the cinnamon challenge. All right. The rod, I'm the ready. cage raw dog and challenge. Yep. Do you want to see my handful? <laughs> Jesus Christ, there's so many M&Ms. All right. <laughs> Mm-mm. That's not going to happen. <laughs> so you can't do 20? <laughs> Do I actually do it? <laughs> uh, I think those little halves kind of 
caught in the <laughs> shredded my esophagus a little bit. Okay, so you uh, did twenty? <laughs> yeah, twenty. Well technically nineteen and two halves. <laughs> Brian. So much more than I expected. <laughs> Alright. Well, I kept a lot of M and M's though, so I, I must have been expecting it. I'm gonna chew on these Holy other two b- little tiny like not halves as a, as a consolation prize. <laughs> oh my god, dude! I got twenty one here. Twenty one. All right, this is for the win, people. Oh, Wish for the win, luck. everybody. Will Brian puke? Are we on ever microphone? gonna get to the movie? Nope. <laughs> here we go. There's the spit building up. Holy shit! This is so many. Here we go. <laughs> One came out. <laughs> Shit! I only got to twenty. It's a draw. One one came out. This, I almost threw up. This twenty. We're, it's a draw. Okay. After after all. Shit! It fell out, man. I could have won. Uh, all right. Hey, GGs, GGs. Did you, I'm sweating. I got my. I got a pit <laughs> stain right now. Look at this. Legitimately sweating because that was an intense game. Yeah. Of this. All right. This Let's nonsense. You oh guys. My God. That, Brock, this week. Can you describe what it feels like right now? Um, it feels like a <laughs> like I got a baby. A baby full of rage. Just sitting in the pit of my I, stomach. I feel like I have a bunch of stuff going on in my throat and I don't like it. Wow. Well, then that should be a very familiar feeling. <laughs> okay, rage. When did you say this was released? Twenty fourteen. It's a five point oh. Okay. Um we're in the five point oh's. It doesn't Hoorah. We'll see if it feels like a five point oh. Okay. Um, do you have any background on this one? I don't. Um, I don't have a ton of background on this one, but I do want to say, if you go on IMDb and you look at Rage, what you will see on any movie on IMDb is the people who liked this also liked. And all six movies, it shows six movies, you'll see all six movies with Nicolas Cage either staring at you or staring slightly off screen. This is what we, we did talk about this a while ago for one of his other movies, like Dying yes. of the... Oh my god, excuse me. Dying of the light. Oh, yes. I got I got a there belly are, full of M&Ms. There are six movies that look the exact same. They all have relatively similar like titles and like types type space on their titles. But like I clicked over them just to see like okay, so there's Rage. There's Stolen. There's Pay the Ghost. There's Trust. There's Vengeance. Like there we'll are get to them, man. all of these movies that have the exact same title, the exact same plot line. Like, they all sound like they're going to be the exact same. But this week, we started with Rage. Nicholas Rage. Nicholas Rage. Um, I'll tell you I'll tell our- you what Rage is. So Rage is a movie where Nicholas Cage is a reformed criminal and his daughter gets kidnapped. That's the basic so, plot. This is called Rage in America, but actually el- everywhere else Tokarev. in the world is called Tokarev because that's a type of uh, handgun. Yes. It's a Russian handgun. Uh, wow. Our Nick Tro, our Nick Cage's eyes and a gun come into the door. It's a quick scene. Yeah. And then it actually cuts to Nick Cage by a school. So it was just kind of like a teaser. Now we're by a school. Nick Cage picks up. Here's my notes for this part. Picks up his hot, uniform-wearing daughter from yeah. school and kisses her on the lips. Kissed real close to the lips is my note. No, it was on the lips. Ooh. And she's wearing like a little schoolgirl yeah. uniform, and it's real pervy. You don't know if she's his daughter yet. <laughs> but you learn soon enough. Well, she does call him dad, and you're still kind of like, well, yeah. he kissed her on the lips, but no, it's one her thing, dad. Yeah, so one note that I have is that like Nick Cage looks fine, but we know that this is 2014 and that like... Those 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 hair plugs are shoe polished up, and they're doing all they can to just cover as much of his head as possible. Yeah, we're gonna get into that a little later, only because I I want to get to it a little later when we get later on in this uh in this movie. Do you have any notes about their talk? Uh, I, I said don't. that he's racist against Indian culture because she has like a henna tattoo on her hand. And that she's yeah. doing some SAT prep there, and then they're planning a party for her at a bar. Um, yes, that's where I kind of want to pick yeah. up because um, it like jump cuts. The thing is, it jumps like straight from the car to the bar, and you're like, the oh, editing okay. on this movie is really bad. It's weird. Yeah. Well, there's like a scene with Danny Glover and Nick Cage. I don't know if you caught it, but it's like they shot it separately yeah. like they weren't in the room it cuts too fast like yeah. it almost cuts off nick cage's sentence yeah. but anyway so they're at the bartender or at the bar nick cage's two friends there and one is the bartender yeah we're introduced to his two buddies uh what are their names their names are kane 
really attractive. See the bartender? Really attractive guy. Yeah. Bartender. I actually put that he looks like Christoph Slash Waltz. Bar owner. And then Danny. Danny O'Doherty, I think, or something like that. Because they bartender? call him by like their first name or the last name. So we have to be clear as we're going through this to call Danny Glover Danny Glover because yes. otherwise they might think it's Danny. Uh, but I put that the bartender looks like Christoph Waltz. Kind of looks like Christoph Waltz, but he's also like very attractive. And at first I was like, oh, this guy's probably foreign, right? Now here's the thing. Then Christoph I looked Waltz on is? It. Yeah. Well, yeah. So this Kane guy, which is like his buddy, is played by this actor. And I was like, oh, what else has he been in? Because he looked kind of familiar. He was in Sex in the City 2, which was done um, by the guys behind another podcast that I like listening to called The Worst Idea of All Time. Mm -hmm. And they watched Sex in the City 2 for a, a year and <clears throat> recorded a podcast on it every week. And, uh, and he plays a character in Sex in the City 2 called Richard Spurt, a.k.a. or Ricard Spurt, excuse me, a.k.a. Dick Spurt. So, oh my god. Yeah. So he okay. is a foreign guy, and he I'm going to call him Dickspert in this movie. Okay. All I want to say about this scene is that the bartender and Danny are talking about how they shared a girl at one point, and Danny has this gross line where he says, we shared the same honeypot, right? It makes us milk brothers. Yeah, that's not and a that's thing. that's real gross. I mean, Eskimo brothers, yeah, but milk brothers, no. <laughs> is real gross. Um, anything else you want to talk about there? Uh, nope. Cut to He's got friends. Nick's home. Yeah. Cut to Nick's home, and the first thing I noticed was that his wife kind of looked like Sarah Trigger from Deadfall. Did you see that? Mm, no. But Nick Cage. Sure. Yeah. I Nick mean, Cage comes yeah, up behind he likes her. Young blondes, guys. Yeah. S Nick Cage surprise. comes up behind her and starts kissing her neck, and she gets oddly turned on by it. Like, yes. Way too into it. His wife is not much older than his daughter. I yeah, say that. Well, and, and then we find out that yeah. a big plot point is that she's the stepmother, and she's having some real issues with it. I don't know. It's like a it's a thing with her. His daughter's name is Caitlin. She has a couple friends over, and Nick is very concerned about her one kind of love interest being a working man. Yeah. Um, in the car, he said something about him being a working man. Here he says, uh, the kid goes, well, I thought you didn't let her go out because Nick pulled him into the kitchen. It was kind of like, so you're going to ask my daughter out? And the kid goes, I thought you didn't let her go out. Nick Cage, I might for a working man. For a working and man. And wh when they were all out in the living room, he said something. He was like, uh, I so I hear you're a working job. man. Yeah, like. How's that working out for you? He says, I heard you're a working man. How's that working out for you? And I was just yeah. like, Jesus Christ, Nick. That could have gotten gone a little more smoothly anyway so like he kind of like tries to intimidate her a little bit but then he also offers her a job and him him a job him, sorry the, and then the like you find interest. out that like he's works for like kind of like along with the mayor i didn't really know what he was but like you find out like he's kind of like a foreman on a construction site yeah ish he's like a construction foreman sure this love interest name by the way is mike if we i don't know if we can keep that track but whatever yeah. Nick Cage, yeah, he's like breaking ground on some project, and then later he's out to eat. And uh, while he's out to eat, Danny Glover says they need to talk. Nick Cage is like, "Really, Danny Glover? Right now?" It's like, dude, if a detective comes up to you and says he needs to talk, you should probably just talk to him. But you do uh, find out that Nick is a reformed criminal, right? He has a bad pass. Yeah. Uh, and Nick, Danny Glover says it's about Caitlin. So they go back to the house, and now there's a flashback. So here's a trope. <laughs> Flashback. All the kids are drinking. They're playing Guitar Hero. Robbers enter. They take Caitlyn. Beat the yeah. boyfriend, the little her two kids to hell, and then yeah. kidnap Caitlyn. Um, and there's a particular scene where Nick Cage is kind of envisioning this in the flashback, and he sees Caitlyn kind of being taken out the hall while he's standing by the front door. And I just put right here, I have a particular set of skills. Okay. Mumbling, overacting, yelling. Bad hair, raw dogging pills. I will find you, and I will bore you. Pretty much. Hey. But here's the thing. <laughs> it's so, like Taken. So what this movie isn't, this movie is not Taken. This movie is not, you know, like... John Wick or anything. Yeah, this movie's not John Wick. But here's what else this movie isn't. This movie's not bad. 
I honestly didn't think this movie was that bad. You know, yeah. Yeah, it's not. We'll, it's not a we'll bad movie. We'll obviously talk about that either. There's, like I said, there's a lot of little things that once I got to the end, I was kinda just kind of... you, but... Yeah. But, but all, ultimately, it does like, feel like Taken. Yeah. In this moment, it feels like Taken. Yeah. That's why I wrote that line there. This is where... So Danny then you're Glover, like, oh, so is... is uh, So Nick Cage's character's name is Paul, and you're like, oh, is Paulie like, going to like go Taken on their asses? No. He's not. Kind of. He like Kind of. He like gets his buddies to basically do all his work for him. Um, but first, so, he goes to... This is... This is where Danny Glover and Nick Cage are talking about how they've known each other for 15 years, oh, and yeah. that's where Danny Glover kind of, But this is where the weird cuts are, because it... Sure. Like, and they do this in movies all the time. It only focuses on Danny, then it only focuses yeah, on Nick, you know. Over the shoulder. But, like I said, there's a couple cuts where it almost cuts off Nick Cage's line, and it just, it doesn't sound natural. That's a little... This guy is, it's his first directing movie, so and you I can thought, really kind of tell. I thought it did fine. Truly. Like, it didn't take me out of the movie. Okay, but it's been it did 50, for me. So what they've said though is that it's been 15 years since the Port Four Peas massacre, this thing that apparently Nick Cage was involved in, which I was right. Okay, um, okay. So then he goes to the boyfriend's house and he like starts asking him questions. He's basically intimidating him. He tells a racist story about when he met his wife, who's Caitlin's mom, and he tells like a racist story about like a Puerto Rican. And then he asked a bunch of racist questions like, was he Russian? Puerto Rican? Did he no. eat like any spicy food? Too much cologne? Like, he's asking all of these, like, pretty and, racist questions. Yeah, he was. He was going totally racist. And at one point, did he say, did they sound like Goombas? Yeah, did they sound like Goombas? Emily. Is that like from Mario Brothers? No, Goombas is like a, it's a term for like Italian people i thought it was like mario brothers but right before that the the story that he tells that, is like if you're a gangster like it just gangster equals racist by nature for like right lazy right. F- filmmakers well because he has all these guys you know yeah. he's got a russian gang he's got well, a he's, puerto rican gang and he's, he's got like irish whatever because he's hooked up with this guy named o'connell apparently like they dropped o'connell's name and so like okay so he's irish clearly danny his like red-headed friend is irish prior to getting all racist though he tells mike caitlin's love interest or whatever like you know did you jump in front of the bullet or whatever and the kid's like no they had or like did you do anything to try to stop him he's like well they had guns and nick cage is like well you should have taken a bullet for her yeah mind you these two have not been dating yeah they're just friends they're friends and nick cage is like no you should have taken a bullet for her so then he talks about when he did meet like when he did meet 17. Caitlin's mom, the 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 Puerto, what did you say it was Puerto Rican? Yeah, guy? it was like a Puerto Rican. Called guy. her a slut, so Nick Cage went and grabbed a tire iron and broke both of his legs. Yes. Yeah. Because so when they were like he's got seventeen rage, or people. nineteen, I think he said. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just want to talk Nick about Nick Cage that. is a badass. Oh. It, and I one guess. last thing, after the races, he says Nick Cage says to the kid. If anything happens to my daughter, I'm holding you personally responsible. It's like, what the hell, dude? Yeah. Why is this kid personally responsible for this? I mean, technically, he should be responsible because, like, he Yes! And so, yeah, because he's... This kid is 17 or whatever, man. Like, you're beating up this 17-year-old who doesn't... Already got beat up. You don't know him? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Anyway, okay. So, then he recruits Kane and Danny his his buddies to basically like say we're getting the gang back together so uh they're like his rumble crew his like old mm-hmm. gang that he used to run around with and it kind of brought up a question of like if you had to get like your rumble crew to like fight like for you like if you had to get two friends from your past to like you know who it get is. together and like fight on your behalf who would you, know you recruit? Who? who would you recruit? I'm thinking. I, I think Ben Wooster and Michael Broker. Ben Wooster and Michael Broker. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. It'd be you and Susie, obviously. Me and Susie. Absolutely. Susie is fucking. He can get scary, man. Susie can get really scary when he gets drunk yeah. and gives you that stare. So I'll give him a few beers and let him go. Okay. And me, just because of my size. Yeah, because you're a big dude. 
You wouldn't See, take me, would you? No. I'm sorry, Brian. Yeah, exactly. But you would not make my Rumble Crew. I, I wouldn't expect you. I'm going into it with like the thought that if I was going to have a Rumble Crew, I need to have two dudes that are like bigger than me. And the only two guys that I know that are like bigger and like... Chad Craycraft? No. Because he's like too passive now. He's he's a passive Jim guy. Knowles? Um, no, I would go with uh, my cousin Zach. Okay. Shout out cousin Zach. Um, cause he's a, he's a big dude and okay. kind of intimidating. He's got a bald head beard. It's a very intimidating yeah. guy. And, uh, and a guy that I work with, I might've brought him up on the podcast before. Shout out Jesse, Jesse. Cause he's just ripped and he's a very like yeah. very affable guy. Like he can talk a guy down. He's, he's a sweet talker. Maybe so, I would bring Joey Anderson. Well, yeah. The bodybuilder. <laughs> Yeah. Shout out Joey Okay, Anderson. guys, anyway, back to the movie. My Rumble Crew. Uh, so he gets his Rumble Crew together. They're running around town, and they go to, like, this drug addict who has a girl sitting there, and they put a noose around her head and, like, oh, you mean the, almost throw the, her out a two-story the Al- window. The Albuquerque necktie? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. So <sighs> Whatever. They, yeah, so they they shake down this druggie named Oliver to get some information. He has a girl, like, that's all drugged up. They... Tie a cinder block around her neck, and then he throws a cinder block out the window, and then has a gun pointed at her head. And so the Oliver kid is like, "Come on, I don't know anything." And then he shoots the rope essentially, and like lets her live. Free and or whatever, then yeah. as they're walking out, he's like, "How did you know that you could hit the rope?" And he was like, "I didn't. I've never done that before." Yeah. Okay. I don't think they, they get Caitlin's... any information, do they? No, they don't because they find Caitlin's body in the river. Like that very next. Brock, you know they scene. don't find information. You yeah. know what happened. Yeah. Well, uh, they find Caitlin's body in the river at the funeral. There's oh, by a the way, abuse wheel. of women. Take that off, baby. Well, Nick Cage didn't. Well, Nick Cage abused a kid earlier. Yes, that's true. Yay! I think I marked it for that. Uh, Nick Cage, at the funeral, there's a guy in a wheelchair. You brought him up already. His name is Frank. He is um, Frank? apparently one of Nick Cage's old bosses. Oh, what I like about him, and maybe this is mean. I'm not going to say it. Um, Frank tells Nick Cage to bury the pain, bury the hurt, and do nothing. Um, because Frank let him out of the business clean. That's like a big point here. Like how... Sure. Nick Cage or Frank's like, hey, don't do anything because I let you get out of here clean. Don't mess it up. What was weird is that, uh, like, Frank is played by Peter Stormare. You don't know him, but I just looked up the actor because, like, basically he's an actor who, like, always plays a Russian guy in every film. Like, he was in Bad Boys 2. He's in, like, a couple other movies, and he's always the Russian bad guy. I'm pretty sure he's in John Wick. Like, he's always a Russian, and yet I was trying to, like, be like, is wait, is he Russian? But no, because his name is O'Connell, and he's trying to be Irish. So he's like a Russian actor trying to put on an Irish accent. It was the weirdest thing. Anyway, but yeah, so like he's he's his old boss and says, stay out of it, basically. And then there's a flashback to the Peas Massacre. And Danny Glover I'm a, says I'm guessing? that... The, Danny Glover says that the gun that killed Kate is like an old gun that hasn't been used in a long time, like a Russian gun. In just about 15 years. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what now there's a flashback. Years ago involving the flashback Russians. to them kidnapping a guy. Um, but they're all like, no, we never talked. We're like, we never said anything. So how could they know? Um, they want to go play cards. They, they want to infiltrate this Russian gang that are playing cards. And the bouncer won't let them in. Correct. And we get the high fucking yaw to end all high fucking yaws. Nick Cage punches a guy, one punch, the dude breaks down a normal door. Oh, okay. With one punch, hinges off. I kicked a door in our apartment. It was a flimsy door. There's a lot of force that goes into breaking down a door. Like how you're just like, yeah, just, I kicked a door. We're not yeah. going to get into that story. We don't have enough We already time. talked about that story yeah, once. Yeah, but we don't have enough time. But I'm just saying, Nick Cage punches a guy, and normally they just fall back into the door. Where, no, he breaks the door. Yeah, so he breaks the door down, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they beat up all the players. One of the guys tried to stab Nick's dick. Yeah. 
I thought that there was some interesting fight scenes. Okay, I will say that. I got I got a couple notes. So he yeah. Uh, let's hear before it. that, like he he brings a report to the school, and then it's the second movie in a row in which he's in a car looking longingly at like his dead relative's belongings, because um, he like gets her, her stuff from the school. Um, and then I also have a note here about uh, a question that I really wanted to bring up because I got it all in big bold letters. Do his kids die slash disappear every time that he's a parent in his movies so far? I think so. No, think about Left Mom Behind. Well, almost, though. Yeah, but they didn't. Well, they almost do. And they didn't in Left Behind either. Yes. Well, little little boy shoots up. Yeah, well, his girl didn't. Well, she almost did, too. But, like, he's a bad parent. If you're Nick, kids, if you're Nick Cage's kid in a movie, watch out. You're Nick's kid? That's all I'm saying. Is watch out, because, like, his kids do not have a great track record in any of his films. Anyway. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, one big kind of point of contention, though, is that Nick says that he prefers knives. So the whole time, he's got, like, this yeah. like, big, like, it's not even, like, a butcher knife. It's not, like, a Bowie. It's, like, a Bowie knife. Yeah. It's just, like, a big, long knife. And he's stabbing the crap out of everybody while well- everybody else is using guns. And this is where I think that some of the fight scenes are something that I haven't seen before. He grabs one of the guy's hands, kind of puts it behind oh, his head, sure. behind the other guy's head. So, like, you know, your arm behind your head. And he just takes his knife and slits the guy's wrist, like, three yeah. times. And it's kind of like, oh, shit. Like, it's gory, but I've never seen that done before. Yeah. Choreography is not that bad. Um, at the end of all of that, Nick Cage has a very Nick Cage in line and just says, shit's about to get radical. Shit's about to get radical. <laughs> radical. Um, okay. Now he... So, all right. He's just back at home packing up Vanessa's... That's his wife. Vanessa's suitcase. Oh, she's um, step... And he's shirtless. She's step out hard. But he's shirtless, yeah, too, man. taco meat. Very unnecessary. He didn't... What about his taco meat, though? It's, like, shaved down. Yeah. I put, looks good. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, trimmed it down or something. You can barely tell. I, I have a, a note here with an exclamation point that says, looks good. Yeah, yeah. it looks better. But he's shirtless for no reason. He's Correct. packing your suitcase. He could have a shirt on. Nick Cage probably came to set and was like, I'm but hot. Then, like, she Took gets a little mad, and then he, like... Is like, uh, I want to have sex with you. And she's like, yeah, okay, a little bit. Oh, you didn't write down that line? No. He says, I think you're enjoying this. Say, my husband is a killer. Come on, repeat after me. My husband is a killer. And they chokes her. Mm. And yeah, she does like it. Like, they get super turned on by it. Twerked. But then they start crying. They get twerked. But then they, they cry. Brock, can I, let me ask you a question. Mm. What's your favorite club? Just, uh, it could be a sandwich. It could be, you know, a, 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 a hangout. What, what's your favorite club? Well, my club, my favorite kind of club, is one of the strip. Oh, variety. It, well, hey. Am I alone? You and Nick am Cage I alone have in these in movies? Common. No. Uh, do I find a friend in Nick Cage? Because does he find an excuse? Any movie that he's playing like a disreputable person to find himself in a strip club? Because he goes to the strip club. He goes to the strip club because that's where you have to be all the time. But they say something like we need a Vori. And a Vori is apparently like a Russian gangster in this gang. So, sure. yeah. So they go to a strip club. They they find a guy. He recognizes the tattoo on the guy's neck. But then it says tattoo? something about like 19 years ago. So I really didn't understand like whether it was yeah. 15 or 19 or what is the happening. timeline's a little wonky. Um. And there's then he a just, like, shaky cam chase. Yeah, chases this dude for way too long until way he too shaky. Finally gets him like he gets shot by Danny as Kane and Danny are like waiting outside the club. Nick like spooks the guy. The guy runs. Danny shoots him in like the stomach. So the guy's like basically leaving a blood trail the whole time. Finally, Nick like gets to him on top of a roof. The dude's just chilling. And, yeah, and once Nick Cage catches up, he just yells, Who did it? Who did it? Who did it? No, 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 no. Who did it? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. Who did it? 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 And, yeah, and then he 
And while banging crying. his head up against like the uh, the concrete off the ground, yeah, the, he's banging the bad guy's head. Who did it? Who did it? Who did it? Who his did accent? It? Who did it? Yeah. He doesn't have an accent in this movie, but the way he says these lines here is it has a bit of a twist to him. Maybe if you don't pick it as a Pete Cage, I'll put it in there because it's kind of weird sounding. Um, uh, spoiler alert! Hey, shh! I said if you pick it. Uh, now he meets Danny Glover in a bar, and Danny Glover, you know, says something like, "Hey, man, my kid got hit by a bike. I know what you're going through." And Nick he got Cage hit is like, "By a car while he was on his bike." There's a or, yeah. slight difference, but. <laughs> And Nick Cage is like, there's a difference. Your kid is still alive. Which I agree with Nick Cage. Yeah. I get what Danny Glover was trying to do, but... Yeah, Danny Glover is basically saying, like, a guy hit his kid on a bike, and then he, like, tracked that guy down and was sitting outside his house with a gun ready to shoot him. But then he realized that, like, at that intersection there was, like, a blind spot and it could have happened to anybody. So he learned remorse. And then Nick's like, yeah, no, that's not me. Now we get to I, I, what I actually think is a pretty cool scene. Again. And Danny's like, um, "Yeah, okay, fine, fair enough." We get to a cool scene where they bust into a, a, a bunch of druggies' house. homes. Yeah, like a big and meth house, which you don't know why. Like that's not really explained, but like, okay, I guess you find uh, out later that it's it's excuse me, it's all leading back to this dude named Chernoff, who's apparently like the leader of the Russian gang. So there's O'Connell, Another... who's like the Irish gang leader. And then there's Chernoff, who's the Russian gang leader. And this is one of his meth houses. And that, like, gambling den was one of his gambling dens. And the strip club was full of, like, one of his guys. At the strip club, though, I did want to say that there's, like, ten dancers on stage with literally nobody in the club. So they're just, like, dancing for no one. And they're fully that clothed. That felt really sad. <laughs> Not fully clothed. They're in their panties and bras. They're in, um, like, out I- uniforms. Yeah, I weird. think there's a couple of really kind of again things I haven't seen in a movie before. Uh, one of one of the guys, Nick Cage, again takes the guy's hand, but this time it's behind his back, not his head. Yeah. And it's kind of on his lower back. Takes a knife, stabs his hand through his back, so the guy like can't move his hand. I've okay. never seen that before. Again, kind of gory, but I was kind of like that's kind of interesting too. At another sure. point, Nick Cage is kind of sneaking around with his shotgun. He sees the shadows of a guy around the corner. Shoots the guy through the corner. And I was just kind of like, that's kind of cool through again. The wall. Yeah. Yeah, through the wall. And then finally, Nick Cage kind of stumbles to this one very room where he has. Good gangster for being out of the game for 15 years or whatever. It's, it's like riding a bike, man. He like falls on the ground. So he's laying on the ground, and there's like two hallways he's looking at. So he's got a shotgun pointed at one, he's got his pistol pointed at the other. And now the guys come entering through those. Kills them both while he's like on the ground shooting there. Again, kind of a cool yeah. little scene. Yeah. I'm not denying that it was it was a good scene. Um and they get like one guy, I think, to like talk a little bit. Again, they're basically going to war with this Chernoff guy in order to like find out if he's the one that kidnapped Caitlin. Because they don't know. But then they so, killed too many people or something. Okay, well so at And then get any info? Well sh- yeah. But like at this point, Okay, so I don't know if you want to talk about anything else there. Well, I was just going to say that so then Danny Glover comes back and investigates the building. Yeah. And he says something about one of the guys there that has a rap sheet as long as my dick. Yeah. And I was like, Danny well, Glover. you know, dicks... I was like, dicks proportionally are kind of small, <laughs> like, compared to a lot of other things. So, like, is compared this guy's rap sheet, sheet small, or is Danny Glover hung and he's comparing it to all other dicks? Your wiener isn't as long as this sheet of paper? <laughs> I know you got right. a small notebook, but <laughs> <laughs> still not even as big as this notebook. Um, yeah, no, it's it's uh, yeah, but like I think we then then cut to like Chernoff and like they're telling Chernoff like, hey, uh, a bunch of our dudes just got killed at like one of your meth houses, but like Chernoff right. actually seems like chill as hell. I kind of like Chernoff. Chernoff's like a cool dude. The actor yeah, that plays him he's is cool. Jacked. Yeah. He's kind of, he's he looks old again, but he's the dude is jacked. super calm. He's just like real chill, and he's like, oh, well, this this kind of shit can't stand. And then he's like, okay, oh, I'll deal with it. I just had a burp, and it tastes exactly like M&M's. Yeah, you're going to like... Oh, God. They're, they're going to come up later. <laughs> You've been like massaging your throat this entire time. I, it feels like it's in my throat. Yeah, probably hey, what is, it is. Um, what is Christoph Waltz's real name in here? What? 
the guy who looks like Christoph Waltz, what's his name? Kane? Or Kane? Or, with a K? Yeah, or Dick Spurt. <laughs> Dick Spurt, okay, I'm going with that. Um, they come to Dick Spurt's bar. Oh, yeah. The Russians do. And Dick Spurt starts getting his... Well, before he Are starts getting his ass up? kicked... Because <laughs> you're like... No, why? Oh, you're like... Mouth made like a gagging like motion. Oh, no. Um, D- Dick Spurt gets a chance to call Nick. He sees the guys come up. He hides behind a wall and he calls Nick quick. He's like, Nick, oh, yeah. you've got to get over here. They're here. And then Dick Spurt gets his ass kicked. And Nick is trying to hard. call Danny. And Danny won't answer. Danny won't pick up. Not Danny Glover, uh, but Danny the Ginger. No, we're clear. We're clear. When we say Danny Glover, <laughs> we mean Danny Glover. Sorry. Danny the uh, Ginger. They take Kristoff just as Nick Cage gets there, and now there's a high-speed chase. This, I didn't think, was shot as well. Nope. But, but so, like, there's a high-speed chase. Eventually, like, the car gets away, I guess, or something. I don't know. Because a cop but cuts like, into Nick. Yeah. The, so Nick is chasing the bad guys, the but then the cops are chasing Nick. Chase Nick. And it just so happens, though, that, like, as, like, Nick gets stopped by a cop car, the two detectives that are immediately on the scene are Danny Glover and this other, like, white detective that, like, has been, like, on this case. They just happen to be right there at that exact and moment, the, which is, like, The, the other detective, the non-Danny Glover detective, like, Danny Glover's been talking about how Nick Cage is doing wrong. He knows Nick Cage has been killing all these guys. He tells Nick Cage to stop. Nick Cage now just broke a bunch of laws again, and Danny Glover lets him go. And the other detective yeah. is like, Come on. Yeah, you're going to let him go? Yeah, he's like, what the hell? Anyway. And he does, so Nick yeah. Cage gets off. So this is weird. So at this point, I I watched the movie before you did, and I remember like asking you too, like, who do you think kidnapped Caitlin? Frank. Right? So the wheelchair. So guy. I'm thinking like I think it's Danny. The the friend, because like why I texted you, yeah, when he wouldn't answer his yeah, phone. Like I thought this Danny dude is in the pocket of like frank yeah and that like they're working together somehow against nick cage Kristoff is tied up and they're he's shirtless and they're punching his chest basically like a punching bag yeah. um the the russian but guy again, Chernoff, I don't his name. Chernoff. so Chernoff, Chernoff like takes his shirt off and he's a boxer apparently and he's just like hey man like I'm going to give you some water, and then apparently, like, this is, like, a form of torture where if you, like, kind of slash, like, waterboard them, slash, like, fill up their bladders and then punch their bladders, it's really painful. Sure. Yeah. Um, um, and, and here's where Dick Spurt, like, says, yeah, we did it. Like, because, well, yeah. well, because Christoph says, why would you do it? And, and he's, he's like, like, well, you or why would Caitlin. we do it? No, the, the Russian says, why would we do it? And Dick Spurt says, well, for revenge of that... Thing oh, that we yeah. did 19 years he says, ago. You killed Caitlyn, and, and the the Russians like, what? Like what? No, he didn't. Like, why would we do something like that? And he's like, for revenge because of what we did to you. Yeah, 15 years to ago, the guy 19 years ago. And then Kristoff like, goes, do? or not Kristoff, Dick's the Russian's guy name or Chernov. Russian guy Chernov. says that you killed my brother. Yeah. So then we find out. Oh shit! Yeah, they killed Chernov's brother. And back so then. they have been sitting on this like hit that we saw a flashback of um of like basically they like hijacked a car they killed the driver they let one guy get away the guy that they let get away was the guy in the strip club with the tattoo that nick later killed and Mm -hmm. um i yeah there's like i i guess that was like the four p's massacre i don't know Mm -hmm. but like there's basically this big hit on the russians again like by the irish that nobody's ever talked about for 15 years because, like, Nick and Danny and Kane have kept it a secret that it was them. And they, like... Right. They, like, robbed them of a bunch of money and a guns and, like, hid the guns for 19 years or something. And then... They killed Kane. Dick Spurt. Yeah. They killed Dick Spurt. Chernoff kills um, Kane. Now we get back to Nick, who finds Danny, like sitting there with a hooker oh and and it's been set up that danny likes to party and do cocaine right cocaine. and um danny's trying to like tell him what's going on or like why like because now nick cage is getting at- accusatory and while danny's talking nick cage is just uh-huh 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 he says uh-huh like 10 times which we watched the little rascals this weekend nick cage would have done a good job in that movie <laughs> 
You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Hey! Do you have any lines written down here? Oh, I do. All right, go ahead. You talked! Rat! 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 You swore. I loved you. And you swore. And then he stabs Danny. You are a rat! Yeah. And he did. In like a fight, basically, and then Danny dies. What is hey? What is that line from? Where we say he did? Oh, he did. Um, what is that from? Is that from one of those commercials too? With the like, he got injured, injured bad. No, <laughs> no, that wouldn't be from that. No, <laughs> well, he did. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so yeah, but Nick Cage kills Danny. Um, now Cherkov and Frank again, or Chernoff and Frank. So again. Yeah. The Russian guy and the Irish wheelchair guy meet up. Yeah, so they have like a rooftop uh, like parking garage meeting where basically they're like, hey, like Chernoff says, hey, Frank, why don't you tell your dipshit, like, you know, henchman, um, Pauly, that like you killed his daughter? And Frank's like, why don't you tell him that you did it? And then shit goes awry and basically they end up like shooting each other. And here's what I have to say about that. Chernoff has some really bad henchmen if they can't hit a guy in a wheelchair. Correct. Because Frank is fine, and then finally Chernoff kills Frank, but it's just like, yeah. you gotta get some better men if they can't kill a guy in a wheelchair. Yeah. Okay. okay now, out of nowhere, yeah. we go back to Kate's friend, Mike. Well. And he gets a, a text. What? Yeah. What did we miss? Well, Nick, well, so like, it do, it doesn't go back to Mike right away. It goes to Nick, who like, Flashes back to his wife, the stepmom, saying, like, you need to do, like, whatever it takes to find out who did this. And then he, like, cuts to, I think, Danny Glover saying, like, hey, this gun was a gun that hadn't been fired in, like, 19 years. And then he, like, cuts back to, like, the flashback of the Four Ps massacre. And he, like, realizes that the gun that they, like, wrapped up and put with all the money and hid is a gun. The Tokarev is this, like, specific Russian gun this Tokarev gun that is only used by, like, the Russian mafia. And he jacked this Russian dude and then stole his gun. And so it's like, oh, shit. That's, like, probably the gun. And who had that gun? MFN? But the kids. MFN? Me. I had that gun, and I put it in a toolbox in my house, like, to keep it out of the way, wrapped up. So and he gets there and he sees it's not wrapped up or something. Yeah. So he knows it was. So moved. he finds it like in his now, closet and he's like, "Oh shit! Somebody like in my house used this gun." Now well, it comes back in to my Kate's house? friend, who gets a text that says, "Need to talk. Meet me at the park." And he goes in the middle of the night, which is freaking stupid. Correct. Uh, but now, his friend is now there. Here's the thing, though. I want to cut it back way back to the beginning, where um, Caitlin. When she was like gonna have some friends over, she did tell her stepmom and Nick Cage that her friend like Alice or, or Lisa or something like that was coming over, and I was like, I think motherfucking Alice did it. This Alice friend who oh. we never saw, I was like, oh, it was probably Alice. But anyway. the kid, the the other friend, not Mike, Mike's friend, because there were three of them there that night that Kate was killed, just basically says, "I'm sorry, Mike. Evan, I'm sorry." I had to I had to tell him or whatever. And, and then um, he runs away. Yeah, and then he runs away, and Mike shot Kate with Nick's gun. Well, what happens? Does Nick Cage Nick kill Cage, him? No, Nick Cage like, comes up behind him and basically like kind of beats him down and then um, confronts him. Mike confesses, and then uh, Nick Cage does not kill him because Nick is like, you son of a bitch, and then like kind of cries about it and goes walking off right goes home calls up vanessa his wife and basically commits suicide like it's a suicide call he calls up his wife and says like hey get out of here mumbles to his wife on the phone and says like get out of here like we're done and no you can come back he says you can come back he told her to get out a long time ago he's saying you can come back because things are fine now yeah and he shoots himself no he doesn't or did he or stabs himself no he's sitting there on the bed it it like basically goes back to like the opening of this movie where we just saw like his eyes while a gun was creeping in it's because like these three russian dudes basically show up at his house with a bunch of shotguns and then like 
it's him in the room as like the Russian dudes come into the house, find him, and then kill him. So like he just knows that like I thought he stabbed himself no, too. There's like nowhere else to run. I thought it was like as as they were coming in, he was stabbing himself. I don't, think I don't so. know. I think he just gets shot by the shotguns and then doesn't dies. matter. Nick Cage dies. Nick Cage dies. Oh, I didn't even have that down. And dies. the movie's over. Um, here's where I have a huge problem with this movie. Nick Cage kills a lot of people, including his best friend. You mean to tell me when he heard it was a Tokarev? He didn't realize the – he only had, like, five guns up in that toolbox. He didn't know that he had a toker rev and didn't think, like, oh, those kids were here. They were drinking. You mean to tell me this whole time while he's killing all these other people, he never thought to himself, oh, toker rev, hmm, Russian gun, hmm, I wonder who has that. No. You mean to tell me that never crossed his mind? No, because he's probably thinking, like, man, these Russians. No one talked. These Russians really want to get me. No one talked. Yeah, no. And it would be so weird that it would happen 19 years later or 15 years later. Like, that's weird. Here's another thing. And it, it, this is what I wanted to bring up earlier. So, regardless of whether this is 19 or 15 years later, they are talking about doing this, like, robbery of of the Russians when they were, I believe, 19 years old. Because they keep saying, like, oh, we were kids. So they were, like, 17 or 19 years old. And if you do that math... Then technically, right now, Nick Cage is supposed to be 36 years old in this movie. Yeah, right. 36 to 39 years old. That's why I was confused by the flashbacks because it was a bunch of young kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's hilarious because Nick Cage is freaking 52 or something and he's supposed to be playing 36. It's All right. Should we not go to our tropes? Uh, No, because there's one little other truth nugget that I want to lay on you. Oh, my God. What else is there? Oh, this one. What? This one's got some payoff. Uh, so when they flash back, it's not like Nick Cage, like with CGI or whatever. There are three younger version actors playing the Nick, the Kane, and the uh, Danny roles, and Nick Cage's actor is like kind of like a heavy set young man who doesn't look a whole ton of a lot like Nick Cage, but um, okay. kind of bears some similarities. And uh, do you want to know about that uh, that particular actor's name? Not really, but what is it? Weston Coppola Cage. Oh my god! That's Nick Cage's son. It's a Coppola. That's Nick Cage's really? son. Really? Who's playing? Really? Young Nick Cage in this movie. If you look at the IMDb of a Weston Coppola Cage, first of all, he's a interesting looking child. Really? And uh, I'm gonna look it And up. he's been in what's his name? Weston Coppola. Weston Cage. And he's been in a lot of other Nick Cage movies, including Vengeance, Joe, Drive Angry, and Lord of War. Okay. So he'll come back. Weston. Weston Cage. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to assume it's the guy for Drive Angry. Yeah. Oh, my God. Is it the emo-looking guy? Yeah. He kind of looks like um, the lead singer of 30 Seconds to Mars. Um, yep. Mm-hmm. Jared Leto. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Wow. That's weird. It's he's only he's only in Nicolas Cage movies. Pretty much. He's done a couple well, things. No, himself. a couple other ones. Yeah. He's known for his Nicolas Cage movies. Um. Okay. Okay. So let's wow. let's tick off some tropes. But I just wanted he to point that out because like I noticed the, that and I was like, he kind of looks like the gay kid from Wedding Crashers. Uh, Todd. The Todd. Yeah, the painter. Uh, no, Todd. I'm keeping this painting. It was a gift. <laughs> Tropes, taco meat. It was there, but it wasn't there. You know, but his shirt was off. Yeah. Flashbacks, mumbling, repeating. Yeah, I did mark abuse of women and children. Yeah. The hugest high fucking yeah, and he died. Did I miss any? Uh, I don't think he called anyone the opposite sex. We don't have to run through the ones emasculated. that we missed, but did we miss any? Did I miss any? I don't think he did a hand. Did we get a fuck you? I I know that there's a fuck, but I don't think there was a fuck you. Okay. Um, what's your Pete Cage, Brock? Well, I'll go first. Cause it sounds like you. I don't think you're picking the one as me, but um, my Pete Cage is gonna be all the working man references. I I went back and kind of watched the beginning. There's like four or five. I'll see how many I put in here, but I especially like when he says, "So I hear you're a working man." How's that working out for you? How's that working out for you? So Mikey has a job, huh? 
Michael, I hear you're a working man. Yes, sir. And how's that working out for you? I didn't think you'd let her go out, you know? You smoke weed? No. No drugs at all? No. Well, then I, I might be willing to make an exception for a working man. Paul doesn't like to brag, but the truth of the matter is he built his first development himself. A lot of hard work. It tends to drive my foreman a little crazy, but there's nothing that satisfies like uh, an honest day's work. <laughs> okay. So that's my peak age because it's so stupid. Well, clearly my neat peak age then is, no, 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 don't die. Don't, no, don't die. No, don't die. Who did it? 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 And then he like cries. Someone put a bullet in my daughter's head with a Russian handgun. Who did it? Huh? What was it, Chora? Huh? Someone after had a turn? Who was it? <laughs> Who did it? Who did it? No, 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 don't die. Don't, don't, don't die, don't die. No, 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 don't yeah. Uh, is Nick Cage a good actor? Okay. Oh, man. <gasps> this is... Oh? This is... Oh? This, this kind of feels like... When the Grinch stole Christmas, and it says like his heart grew like three sizes or ten sizes that day. Okay. Because this movie was very refreshing to me. This this I didn't hate this movie, and it actually was like a good movie, especially in comparison to The Runner, and in comparison to the Doggy Dog, like that I expected it to be. It was a pretty well done movie, like. The, the actors were fine. Well, I really like. So instead of, I mean, instead of if Nick Cage is a good actor, what are you going to give this on IMDb? You're kind of talking about how you like it. What are you going to give this a film? Five. Right where it is. Okay, out of five, I am giving it a four because I'm going to put it right by like a Ghost Rider. It had a nope. coherent plot. I cared about it. I would even like watch it again if it was on. You know how they say that an ending can make or break a movie? That's the ending ruined it for me. Because it just it didn't make sense that this guy would not think to himself, oh, a Tokarev. I have a Tokarev True. in my That's... house. That ruined it for me. And then there's like a couple of weird editing things. So I'm, I'm only giving it a four. I don't think he knew that he had a Tokarev until like he had to think so long and hard about the whole thing back in like the That's whole That's a robbery. huge moment in your life. You're not going to forget it. The thing is, I am not giving him the benefit the of the doubt on that. the futility of, like, revenge. That's what it was all about, is, like, showing, like, the futility. Because, like, honestly, not, like, nobody was at fault except for this Mike kid. And... He killed everybody. And everybody he died. He killed so many when people. I, when I was in school and, like, people would ask for, like, book reports or, like, you know, like a movie sum- summary or whatever, synopsis, I used to just, like, F around and, and I had a problem with like teachers and authority so i used to just like get lazy and just be like i don't know some some stuff happens and then everybody dies let me guess like everybody dies and in this movie literally some stuff happens and then everybody dies um yeah but so okay so you liked it a little better than me i some some things took me out of it that i didn't i can't give it a five i because i far enjoyed ghost rider more um the actor what what do you are you giving nick cage his first thumbs up i can't (laughs) i still can't do it i still can't do it here's the difference i think somebody else could have done better I honestly still think that like I I could have gotten more from this role than what Nick provided me with and like Nick didn't sell me on like the badass. Like again, this wasn't taken. This wasn't John Wick. Like Nick didn't do much in this film to be like, "Hey, I'm a grieving father like 
really amped up and trying to get my daughter back. Like, he was there. Like he did in Looking Glass, yeah. <laughs> but, like, he was there um, and, like, he... See, this is another one where it's... He was he was fine. Sure. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't think fine. we're in the good territory yet, though. He's fine again. But this is called... We're, our metric is, is he, is he good? And I don't think he was good. Again, it was just... There's a reason that this film is a five on IMDb. There's a reason... Yeah. People don't know about it. It's because he wasn't that great. Right. It was fine. Was Nick. Like, there's a reason that Rage is not taken. Exactly. So, we're both at There's over a reason that 15. we talk about Taken and that we don't talk about Rage. We're over for 15. I can't believe we're through 15 movies. And, and like, we haven't I, seen I really a good try performance. Not to- I try not to let my bias get in the way. I honestly think if everyone watched all 15 of these movies, I don't think... Uh, I don't think. I don't even think in Mom and Dad since. you can say is he's good. No. The reason people like him is because he's crazy. I don't think he's good in Mom and Dad. I still... I said like, I like Mom and Dad, he's not good in these movies, man. He's just not. So I don't care what people say. You if they're your bias. I'm trying... <laughs> butter, butter, butter waistline. Butter, the hair I'm trying to be unbiased. And he's just not good. Okay, no. that's all it is. No, he's fine. No. So like we're like we're like at the fifty percent on the Rotten Tomatoes. It's like you know he's not quite fresh, but it's not so rotten that like it's going to be panned. You know. Correct. Whatever. Next film. I think. Are you excited for this one? Do you know this one? Army of One. Oh yeah, <laughs> I am. I am excited about from, this one. From twenty sixteen, yeah. it's another five point oh. Waiting for this one. S- Still in the castle period. It's still in the castle period, but this one is going to be hopefully a chance for Nick to like sh- show me a little something. This one, right. I, I do have a little background on. I know that it is a film about essentially like Nick is going to be a delusional man who tries to go to either Afghanistan or like Iraq to kill Osama bin Laden himself. Oh, dude. Okay, I know we're almost done. There's one more thing I just have. We got so caught up in the games and stuff. I just we had to say, on the last the episode, yeah, I'm right. Go throw up in um, the toilet after this. What? You you know, in the last episode, how for my PK, I was just like, oh, I'll just find a girl that says like, ooh, and then you kind of do your clap motion or whatever. So I put that in there. Do you know how awkward it is to try to find a girl saying ooh on YouTube? Like you get. It's really weird. Like, you just get a bunch of people. I don't know if they're simulating sex or they're having sex. Then sometimes you hear a guy's voice in it. And it's just like, oh, um, I don't like this. No, Brian, I don't. I can honestly say that I don't look know up, how weird. Look up. No, I don't look think up, I'm going to. Look up woman sex ooh, and, and you'll see what yeah, I'm talking Yeah, I don't think about. I need to look up woman sex ooh <laughs> on uh, YouTube, Brian. And how would you spell ooh? Brian, I'm pretty sure I know a couple of different websites where I can find a woman sex ooh noise. <laughs> I just wanted that classic ooh, but I couldn't find it, so I kind of went with one that's close. How would you spell ooh, though? Why would you though? just got, like, Leah to, like, get on a microphone and just go, like, ooh? Because it's not the same. Why is it not the same? <laughs> uh, there's just that uh, stereotypical uh, ooh, ooh, ooh out there. Hmm? We're done. Do you want to tell oh, people are we about done? us? Yeah, we're done. No, I don't. My butt's getting sore. No. I want to go burp up something. I got to find a better ends. chair. Um... <laughs> So, everybody, I uh, can't say that you <laughs> would have enjoyed what you heard here today, but if you're interested in knowing more about us and our lives and our Throwback Thursday posts, you can find us on Instagram at WeGageCagePod. You can find us on Twitter and Brian's weird musings about dogs and dolphins and sharks and... <laughs> Jet skis. All I'm saying is if we have converted wolves into dogs, why can't we ride sharks already? Come on. Why wouldn't your natural progression go from sharks to dolphins? Well, we already ride dolphins. I'm saying I want to get on a shark and I want to just ride it through the ocean, man. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're on Twitter at WeGageCagePod. And... You can... We're on YouTube now, guys. I will be releasing them on YouTube. We are so on the tubes, that. baby. If, the, if that's how you usually get it, all 14 eps on, are on there. This will be the 15th one on there, so look for that. Yes. And as right. always, 
and forever. Good luck with your M&Ms. No, 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 Brock, you got it wrong. I'm sorry. I, I know we've been talking about the M&Ms a lot. It's, it's good luck with your balls. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to be burping up You want to try again? Later. I'm going to be burping up M&Ms. Uh, good luck. <laughs> Do you want to try it again? <clears throat> yeah, I'll try. Good luck with your balls. There it is. Okay, bye, everyone. Good luck with your balls.